Okay, we are going to be looking at UV unwrapping and how you can take a mesh like this, create a UV map that you're going to place uh, texture files on in order to make it look uh, as realistic as you'd like it to be. Um, so UV unwrapping is a key process in being able to add materials and textures uh, appropriately on top of a three-dimensional mesh like this. And uh, if you look at this uh, picture here, this gives you an idea of what UV unwrapping is all about. The um, object over here obviously is a three-dimensional mesh. Um, it, it's an object uh, of an alien that has some detail on it. And what has happened over here on the left side, you can see that the mesh and all the faces have been kind of peeled away and flattened out on a map. And there are two types of maps that I'm showing here. The map on the left is a color or a diffuse map that just shows where the color goes on this object. And the middle one is showing you a normal map, which provides vector information and shows you where height displacement or where kind of things bump out or they crevice in. And that allows us to get detail on an object like this without having to put that detail in the mesh itself. So this is the idea, we are going to unwrap a mesh and we are going to provide a map so that we can add detail onto our Suzanne monkey head. So um, this is, uh, if, if you followed my retopology uh, video, you'll see that this is really where we wanted to go, is using retopology of a high density mesh to get to something that looks more like this, that is not too many faces um, is symmetrical and clean enough to work with in a 3D program or an animation. So this is what we want. But the problem with this is if we, you know, look at it here, it just does not have a lot of detail on it. In comparison, I will show you a high density mesh. This face has a lot of detail on it. So I, I took uh, the Suzanne model. Um, I went into the sculpt tool and I add a lot of features that I want in my eventual model. These are wrinkles and skin folds, etc. But the issue is I can't take this and bring it into a 3D engine or try to animate it. And the reason is, is that there's just way too much information here. If we zoom in on the mesh, we can see that it, it has a lot of meshes. It's in the hundreds of thousands of vertices. And that's just too much to work with. So we need to work with our model that looks more like this, um, but get the detail from that high topology mesh on this model. And that's where UV unwrapping comes in. So to start with UV unwrapping, the first thing you do is um, make sure that you have your um, low topology model selected and get into edit mode. Now the idea behind uh, UV unwrapping is we are going to act as if we are, let's say, like a seamstress for a toy manufacturer. And what we want to do is we want to take a cut out of Suzanne, um, the head here. We want to have those cuts come together in stitched up seams that when we stuff it is going to look like this model. So we've got to figure out where are those cuts going to go and that process is called marking seams. Now, if we are going to create this plush toy of a Suzanne, we probably would not want to put a seam right across the middle of the face. That stitch seam, you know, can show potentially, and it may not be good to have that there. So we're going to want to put those seams in other places. We're going to want them in places like, oh, maybe under the back of the head, or across the back of the ears, um, or maybe across the back of this ridge here. So we're gonna to wanna to hide those seams to our, the best of our ability. So with that, I'm going to be on the edge selection tool. And one thing I noticed in doing this a few times is that um, this brow, this ridge here, can have a pattern stretch out too much. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna create a seam across the top here, so I get a clean brow. And I just know that just from experience. And you're going to play with things and realize where you may or may not want to put seams based upon uh, the time that you put in and what you see. Um, so that's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, select that edge loop here. 
that goes all around the face and that looks good but what I don't want is I don't want that seam to show here around the jaw I think I want it to come back around the back side and leave uh, the jaw free so um, I'm just going to use my uh, abilities to select here and uh, hold down my shift key so I can unselect that part and then come around the other side and do the same. And then make sure that I get the underneath as well. Okay, so I like that. Um, so what I've got selected, I'm gonna go and mark as a seam. So I go to Mesh, Edges, Mark Seam. And that's going to create a red line for that portion. Uh, the other thing I want to do is I, I want this maybe to come around the back of the head. So what I'm going to do here is select out just individually here. Hold down my shift key so I can select more than one and just go around here. Just like this. I'm going to mark that as a seam. Also, I want something to come down uh, the back so that this all unfolds correctly. Um, so again, I'm just going to select the uh, edge loop around the back here. But I don't want it completely all the way around the front. And that looks good. I, I think that's fine here. What I might do is take this up just a little bit further here there to there, and then get rid of it coming down um, the mouth. So that looks good to me. So what I'm probably going to do is have the seam come up here and then also um, seam around the mouth. So I'm going to do this like that and like that. Mark that seam. And what I want to do is select around the mouth, mark that as a seam. I think I noticed here, I'm going to take that guy and undo that. So if you um, mark something as a seam by accident, you can just do a clear seam and that will clear the seam just fine. Okay, so that looks good. I think probably what I need is going across um, these ears here because there's a lot of detail here and just try to unfold that may be difficult to do. So let me uh, select that edge loop there. That looks good. So yeah, mark that as a seam. I may have marked too many seams. You know, again, you're going to look at this. What would happen is if I had like a procedural um, pattern here, um, uh, let's say I had something create something like procedural hair across all of this. What's going to happen is it's going to um, break at these seams here, so that pattern may not work as you like it. Um, but we are going to do a um, an image map, and an image map is going to line up perfectly fine, so we should be okay. All right, so I have that here. Um, what I'm going to want to do now in the next phase is we're going to want to um, unwrap this and create our UV map. To unwrap this, what you want to do is go ahead and select the faces and select all. So you have everything selected there. And what I'm going to want before I unwrap it is let me create an image file for this. So I'm going to go to the UV image editor and you see there's a previous um, unwrapping um, in a normal file. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create something new. So I'm going to go image, new image. Um, I'm going to call this new unwrap, just like that. And hit, and you can put the resolution that you want. So I'm going to hit OK. So we have new unwrap. And it's just now a black image. There's nothing there that's fine. But you'll see that um, this is the 
old unwrapping that I had before. I'm creating a, a fresh new one. So if I go to mesh, or actually what you can do is just type U and go to unwrap, and there it is. Now that's creating a new unwrapping for me, right? So essentially it's all you needed to do to create the um, UV map. Again, is you create the seams, select everything for your mesh that you want to unwrap, and then type U and UV unwrap, and there it is. The next thing that we want to do is we want to get an image map on here, and then we're going to map that on top of our Suzanne model. And the image map that we want has the detail that we were looking for on this model in terms of the bumps, the, the crevices and the bumps that we had in our high topology model. And that is this model here. Let me get out of edit mode. So that's this model here. So we want to take this information and bake it into that UV map. There are a few things that you need to do to make sure that you are baking uh, appropriately. The first thing that you need to do is under your low topology object, so that's this item here, that's the uh, low topology Suzanne, we need to make sure that we have a material and that there is an image texture mode part of that material. So I'm going to go to my images here and I'm going to go to my node editor and I can see I created a principled shader. So what I need to do now is add in an image texture right there. And the image texture I'm going to want is this new UV map. A new UV unwrap is what I call that one. So let's do that. New UV unwrap. Okay, that's what we want. Um, Later, um, I'll explain how you connect that to the normal, but this is not going to be color information. It's non-color data. Um, but it's just important that we have this image texture file, an unused image texture file, open and available for the baking process. Okay, next that we want to go to our rendering properties and scroll all the way down to the bottom. And under bake, you're going to want to have a few things selected. Under bake type, select normal. This is going to be a normal map. And just so you know, you could bake other things as well. You could bake the color, you could bake the glossy, you could bake shadows, ambient inclusions. All of those things could be baked in a map. But we're gonna bake the normal information, which gives us the height, the crevices, and the bumps that we're looking for. Space is tangent, have selected to active, and have ray distance set to at least one. It may be set to zero, so make sure that that is set to one. Okay, we are just about ready um, to bake this. I'm gonna go switch over to my uh, new, uh, um, new unwrap image, and hopefully I'll, I will bake to the right one. Now, the process here is a little bit tricky. You have to select both models at the same time, and you have to select them in the right order in order to bake. So, the right order, is first I'm going to deselect all. So oh, deselect all. Um, I'm going to go to the high topology model, which remember is this one. Um, we're going to have um, both of these visible here. Again, I'm going to deselect all <laughs> just because I, I don't want to cheat the process. So I now have nothing selected here. So I'm going to first select this one, and we can see it's selected with all that mesh detail. Then you hold your shift key down, and I'm going to right click to select the other one. And there it is. So we see it change color, that kind of orangish red color. Now it lets us know that two things are being selected at the same time. So we should be good for baking. So with that, I'm going to hit bake. And it should start the baking process. There it is. Oh, I see what's happened here. It's changed to fabric wool. Let me go back to new UV unwrap. There it is. All right, so um, this, this image was black before, if we saw before, but now it's got this kind of bluish purplish look to it with these kind of weird colors. That's how a normal map looks. Um, 
this is how the normal map looks for this alien head. So it's kind of that color. And don't worry if the color seems weird to you. It's supposed to be kind of weird. So this is the information. Now, um, just to be sure, I want to make sure that this information aligns to the UV map I created. So I'm just going to turn off um, the high topology model, make sure that I have Suzanne.001 selected. I'm going to go to edit, and there it is. So with edit, we can see that um, the UV unwrapping and the normal information map up right with each other. And that's exactly what we wanted. So that is looking really good. Now the final process that we're going to have is to connect that UV map, which is a normal, into our Suzanne head to make it look like the other one looks. So let's go to object mode here. Let's go to my node editor. So here we have, we've got the uh, new UV unwrap selected. It's non-colored data. What I have here is a normal map mode, so you're going to need this. If you don't have that, just go to Add. I believe it's under Vector, Normal Map, and you'll find it. So first I'm going to unplug this here, plug the color into color here. It's using non-color data, and then I'm going to plug this one into here. But before I do that, let me just go to um, Rendered Mode here. So there it is. There is our Suzanne without any of the normal information. I'm going to plug this in here, and I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that it works. There it is. OK, so now what we are seeing is we are seeing the Suzanne head, which looks a lot like if we went to this model here and looked at that. So it, it's taking all of that three-dimensional information that we have in that mesh, it put it in a normal map, which is pixel information, and we wrapped it, and now have this. Okay, so hopefully you can see the value of UV unwrapping um, and using it in order to map texture files on top of low poly models, you get the um, realism that you're looking for, you get the detail that you're looking for, but at the same time, now you have an efficient and workable model that you can put in a game engine, you can put in VR, or you can animate for media and film. So there you go. Have fun, UV unwrapping.